I've seen. Ooh, I'm in the mood to make fun of some YouTubers, bro. Anyways, I've seen people jump on this trend of self-improvement habits tier list, and I wanted to make one of my own. Specifically, I saw a YouTuber, I'm not gonna say his name, okay? It stays anonymous. I saw a guy, pretty famous YouTuber as well, rank the self-improvement habits, and... Oh boy, it was not a good tier list, so that's why I'm making one of my own. The problem with this tier list is the fact that the icons are way too simplified and so you cannot actually tell what it is but i'm going to assume that this is productivity slash working in general this is my sort of take on this oh my shut the f this dog bro when it comes to work or productivity i have this mindset and belief that i don't plan to change anytime soon and that is you cannot do what you don't like. You have to love your work. And I usually see this dynamic in my generation, which is quite sad. Guys, over the summer, they get a random job that pays them good money. Either construction work or working in a store, whatever. It's not really relevant what it is, but they just get some amount of money and that's good for them. I see this happening. So they hate their job. They hate going to it every single day. And they spend... 80, 90% of that money on partying, drugs, alcohol, whatever it would be. And so you constantly live in this loop of, I go to work and then I spend my money on things that make me numb because I hate my work. You get what I mean. I'm not gonna say I'm 100% sure, but this is an online business that pays you well. And this is life-changing. I have two things that I'm currently focusing on right now. And I've actually got this belief from Jay Waller, so you can go ahead and subscribe to his channel. I'm talking like I'm some big YouTuber here, even though he has like 100 times the subscribers I do. There are two things that young men should focus on entirely. Money and fitness. And so we're gonna talk about fitness later, but money, when you're young, not too many people f are focused on money. Yes, they get some from their parents, some from random business that they do or whatever, and that's pretty much it. But if you were to start focusing on money when you're 15, 17, 18 years old, it's not gonna give you a benefit right in this moment, but the sooner you start your business or your career or you start being more productive, all of this stuff... The sooner you start, the sooner you're gonna reach success. That's my belief. I know what this next one is. It's goal setting. Now, <laughs> before this video, I actually thought this out, what I was actually gonna say in this part. Goal setting, in my opinion, is overrated. But why is it overrated? Because I've set my goals and I still haven't achieved them. I may not be dialed in enough or I haven't set specific smart goals, but in my opinion, right now, they're overrated. Though, in an alternate universe where I have 100k subscribers and I actually set those goals and achieve them, I would actually say, yeah, goals are extremely helpful. And maybe in six months time, my opinion will change. But I will just talk in general. Setting goals will help you, it will give you some amount of benefit, but the way these self-improvement gurus are talking about it, like, it's the magic pill, it's the magic potion that's gonna grow your YouTube channel or some shit, it will do you a benefit, but it's not as legendary as people make it out to be. Usually, the thing is with these self-improvement YouTubers, they over-dramatize everything because they want to they want people to subscribe to their ideology which is self improvement and that is a good thing here's the real talk part of this video they usually over dramatize it because that's how they get views that's how they get attention on them this is why you see in the fitness community for example every single week every single day somebody has something new to say even though the core parts about fitness are always going to be the same eat enough protein train hard eat right and rest well. Those are the essential, the absolutes. And every single day, every single week, you see somebody, oh, this exercise is killing your gains. It's not the actual exercise, it's just you're not focused on the essentials. Goal setting, I would say it's helpful. It's not exactly meh. I have some things in here that we are going to put in this category, but I'm not gonna spoil it. Meditation. This 
is legendary. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm going to upset everyone by saying this. Oh, meditation doesn't do anything. It is a legendary thing. Meditation is the gym equivalent for your mind. You can be focused on journaling. You can be focused on visualizations. But meditation is like the, <laughs> the chest... I don't know where I'm going with this analogy. You know how on Monday everybody's excited because it's chess day today. Meditation is like the chess day of mental health practices. If there was only one habit I'd recommend to any young person right now, it would be meditation because meditation is a meta skill that helps you in every single area of life. It will make you less addicted to substances. It will actually lower your cortisol levels. This is if you're more advanced. If you're doing deep breathing meditation, so not just... Rather, seven to eight seconds in, I'm not gonna demonstrate it because y'all have low attention spans, and seven to eight seconds out. This is even better because you're more focused on the moment, you're more focused on the present moment specifically, and it just makes you more relaxed. I've seen the first man self-improvement tier list video, and his argument is... When you're 30 years old and older, meditation is really a benefit because you're so stressed. But if you're currently 18 years old, you want to start your own business, you want to manage time, you want to learn an instrument, you also want to learn a language, you're going to a gym consistently, you need meditation because it's just maybe a 10 or 15 minute block of time where you're just sitting and you're simply relaxed. By the way, meditation, like all other things, should be progressively overloaded. So, for example, when I started meditation, I did 10 minutes per session. After that, I moved on to 15 minutes, then 20 minutes, and now I'm somewhere in between 25 and 30 minutes. Yes, I do, in fact, listen to orthodox chants because I'm just a giga... Oh, yeah, tier list. I forgot about that. Um... It's probably life-changing books. I don't know if this is supposed to resemble audiobooks because of the headphones, but I don't see any other book icon. This is supposed to be journaling, I'm pretty sure. You can have somebody who lived their entire life. They wrote maybe a 500, 600-page novel or a guide for a young man, and you can get their entire life's knowledge in a book that takes you... 10 hours to read or something like that, which is mind-blowing. For example, I don't agree with Tate when he said, oh, reading books is a waste of time, it's a psyop, you're wasting your time. How the f*** are you supposed to learn? Genuinely, bro, you cannot just learn things from YouTube courses and guides, all this stuff. For example, there is no YouTube video that matches the works of Iron Rand. There is no courses online that match the contents of Hard Times Great Strong Men by Stefan Arneo. These are the books that I believe every single young man should read. As I've said, somebody may learn something for 10 or 15 years and they write a book that has 300 pages in it. I don't know about you, but reading that 300 page book is much better than doing trial and error for 11 years. Okay, maybe five or six years, but still just read the goddamn book. It's not that difficult. And I actually, I don't know if I want to share this in this video. Okay, we'll get real here. The first book that I actually read on my own was The Millionaire Fastlane, and I read it at the age of 16. I believe that was about two or maybe one and a half years ago. Up until then, I could not read genuinely. And no, dumbass, I could read sentences, but you probably know this as well. Before self-improvement, BSI, as I like to call it, you would read some random paragraph online and before you actually finish the paragraph you would just be in another dimension my guy you literally couldn't get through a sentence without your mind going somewhere else and that was the biggest struggle for me also another thing you would read a book and you would actually get dizzy maybe it's because i spent 10 or 12 hours on a computer screen every single day back then I still somewhat do, but it's different. I spend a lot of time in front of my screen, but I believe that it's time that is spent wisely because I'm doing work. Try to finish the paragraph, and I had this TV screen effect. It was all kind of messy shit. 
because I was addicted to video games back then. Reading books, it's not exactly legendary tier, but it is, in fact, extremely helpful. Oh, the next thing. <laughs> Heart inside of a brain, inside of a human skull. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, the designer. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm grateful for the guy that actually made this. I don't know if he actually made this, but you can follow his... Twitter at Kerno Satan. This is learning, obviously. Bro, I need to <laughs> speed this up. I've been recording for 24 minutes and I've put four things on the tier list. I believe it's kind of sad that when you hear the word learning, you immediately think of school or specifically education education system. It's the same thing, right? You uh, learn education in school. No. I wish that were the case. Young people today are so mad because they went into the education system and they actually finished it. And they say this to themselves. I am so done with school. Here's the thing. I'm going to make sure that I'm done and I'll never learn anything ever again. Who knows? That could be the purpose of school. Why do you think the books we read in school are boring? Maybe they intuitively know that these books, they're sh Nobody wants to read them. And by the time you're actually finished with school, you say to yourself, books are so damn boring. I'm never gonna be reading books. And that was me. Up until the age of 16, I never considered books valuable because I thought books are boring. Poor posture or... This is gonna sound so autistic, I know already. Posture maxing. <laughs> Improving your posture, we're just gonna say that. Now, here's the thing. With posture, it's... Kind of the scenario, if you're not really that jacked, it's gonna give you a small boost. But if you are a jacked guy that has poor posture, it's just gonna be a waste. Because you're gonna have that beta male body language like, oh, I'm so scared. No, bro, that's not how it goes. Chest up, shoulders back, look in front of you. It's really not that difficult. I'm just gonna tell you this. If you have shitty posture right now, Posture check. First of all, you fix your posture. I already know you did. P I'm also talking about tongue posture here. So mewing. Be consciously aware. 25-7. I'm serious right here. Be consciously aware of your posture, of your tongue posture, of your neck posture, of your general posture. All of these things that you can in fact improve. It's just a matter of time and your willingness to do these things. Another quick tip if you want to fix your posture. Use those roller thingies that you find in the back area of the gym. They really help me and they're probably gonna help you as well. Improving your posture in general it's helpful. Intermittent fasting. In my opinion, it is in fact overrated. Why am I saying this? I'm still a teenager, right? I'm speaking from a perspective of an 18 year old guy. I cannot go 16 hours without eating. I know this is how our ancestors ate. They ate one big giant meal and that was it. But in my opinion, if you're a 17, 18 year old guy, you're eating 3,500 calories a day, eating just one giant meal is probably gonna make you sick. And I like eating, so intermittent fasting, meh. I guess there are in fact some cases where it could be useful, but it all comes down to personal preference. With intermittent fasting, you should try it for yourself and see how it goes. Turning off your notifications. I wish more people did this one because it is... If you want to become the type of guy who's just unfazed by stress and by notifications and by life in general, you need to turn off your notifications because they play with your emotions every time you unlock your phone you may have done this throughout this video hell you may be doing this right now you go to your phone and you scroll and you see that notification pop up there are so many chemicals being released dopamine oxytocin serotonin all of these things that are playing with your mind this is not real notifications are not real it's all a game it's all made to make you more addicted to your phone and to these social media platforms turning your notifications off it's extremely helpful and when you're doing work as well don't be a bitch about it because i know some of y'all do this when you're editing a video for example or you're trying to start your own dropshipping website every five minutes you check your phone for notifications what if 
that, bro? How do you expect to make a successful business when you cannot even control what is on your phone? Oh, this is reading books. Okay, this one was audiobooks. Okay, okay. Audiobooks, I mean, they are in fact extremely helpful. The way I read books, I have a PDF document in front of me or I have a physical book and I listen to it whilst reading along. You can probably imagine the dynamic and I believe that it makes you more likely to remember the contents of the actual book. And you don't have to use your concentration that much, which it can be a double-edged sword. So audiobooks are in fact helpful, but reading books, everything I've said about audiobooks, actually everything I said about the audiobook section, I don't know how I'm gonna edit this part. Books are extremely helpful. Is this the ad block symbol? For this situation, the only thing that's in my mind, and I'll probably be editing this video and being like, no, and dumbass, that was that other thing, that other thing. I can see why recording videos can make you lose weight. I'm literally sweating. Yes, it is in fact 30 degrees outside or 50 degrees in this room specifically, but I'm very ecstatic. This one is cutting bad people from your life. I think it's a necessary step with your self-improvement journey. There will be a time, it may be tomorrow, it may be in a week from now, maybe two years, who knows, there will in fact be a time period where you're gonna have to decide whether or not you're gonna cut those people from your life. I did this, I kind of did this, I'm not gonna say I did it 100%, but in fact I had Discord friends. The people I played video games every single day on the summer break and they are in fact good people, I don't have anything against them. But I've just improved as a person and I still do talk to them sometimes, but I've moved on. I have my own friend circle right now, the boys, shout out to them. And I believe we're all on this level where we're better than the majority of men now. That's gonna happen to you as well. You may go through a period of loneliness, but with enough conscious effort and with enough time, you're gonna find good people who are also on self-improvement, who also meditate, who also journal and it will be worth it. You're gonna look at your current friend group in two or three years from now and think, those people were not my friends, bro. I told them my deepest, darkest secrets and in fact, we only just played Among Us together. So cutting back people from your life, it's life-changing. It genuinely is. Watching YouTube videos or watching courses on YouTube, whatever it would be. I discovered self-improvement through YouTube. I wouldn't be here if there was no YouTube. So I am kind of biased in a way. I'll just say that YouTube is a platform where you can find the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Should we just say helpful? But I cannot say helpful because this is the thing that changed my life. But Milan, it was you who changed your own life. Sure. But if I didn't have the education and the information from YouTube, I wouldn't be here. I would still be playing Rocket League for 11 hours a day. YouTube, in fact, it's life-changing for my specific case because this is how I started self-improvement. But in general, it would be helpful or extremely helpful. Firstly, we may have the same issue as we did the last episode, and that is you don't really know exactly what this mother icon is. The first one is sunlight. This one is pretty simple. It's not just sunlight. It would actually be vitamin D, getting actual sunlight, getting a tan. All of these things that on the surface, they may appear, yeah, I may go ahead and sun my balls sometime, but it's not really that important. You may know that sun is responsible for your testosterone production indirectly, sure, vitamin D, then testosterone through some magic process, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. If you can imagine, here's my argument, if you can imagine a guy that never sees the sun, for example, we have a... <laughs> We have a guy who plays League of Legends every single day for 16 hours a day. Can you imagine how he looks like? If you don't have any sunlight, if you never go out and see the sun, if you never sun your, sun your balls, I haven't actually done that, so I cannot speak about that. He's gonna appear off in a way. He's gonna 
be so pale, so British. You can probably imagine the type of guy I'm talking about here. Going out, seeing the sun, getting enough vitamin D. All of these should be essential things. Hold on, naturally, it shouldn't really be a thing that we try to do. Instead, it should just be a thing that we do. Humans, I'm talking 10,000 years ago, we would just naturally spend eight hours in front of the sun every single day. That's why I personally believe that sunscreen is bullshit. Due to the fact that our ancestors spent eight to 12 hours outside every single day in front of the scorching sun and they all actually survived for your dumbass to spend every single day inside and not see the sun. It's not a way of life that we should be living a life that is spent only inside, only working. I believe that you should go out and just walk, bro, for 30 minutes every single day. Even if you're busy with your work, even if you have to do this, you have to do that. It's not just for the sun, it's also to have good cardiovascular health and to be happier in general. There was that study, I believe. If you can remember this study, they put people into two groups. One group got a raise of $25,000 to their salary. The other group, I believe, walked for an hour every single day. Which group was happier? And of course, that's right, you knew that there was gonna be some catch. The second group was in fact happier overall. And P.S., when it comes to sunlight in general, or not just sunlight, when it comes to artificial lights as well, like the one I have pointing on my face right now, when you see light and i've spoken about this and when people hear this they're like whoa when you see any type of light your body believes that it's sunlight because the human brain takes hundreds thousands of years to actually evolutionize i don't think that's an actual word it may be but who knows your brain needs some time to develop into realizing that hey this is artificial light and we've only had artificial lighting and the thing is artificial lighting has only existed for a brief period of human history like this much bro this is advice i should be taking you want to limit your screen time and just generally turn off lights when you are going to bed i believe an hour or two before you actually go to bed you should limit lighting in general whoa this whole section was just a bunch of information i don't know if you got all of that if you do have any questions by the way feel free to leave them in the comments sunlight getting enough sunlight in daily it's either extremely i don't i wouldn't put it in the same category as learning and turning your notifications off i'll say helpful but the first thing in the helpful category I forgot I'm in a circle so I can leave the coffee cup here and you cannot see it all oh, the magic illusion <laughs> We'll just say this one is sleeping eight hours sure, but also getting high quality sleep I have a very weird relationship with sleep. I'm gonna confess something I usually go to sleep at 12 a.m. Or 12 30 a.m. Something around that time. It's the summer. That's my excuse Okay, I'll try to improve it before school during August. Do you know when I wake up? I have two options Listen up. 7 a.m. or 11 a.m. 7 a.m. That's when my father wakes me up and says, Oh, do you want to wake up now or do you want to sleep until <laughs> 11 a.m.? And I'm usually for the side of waking up early, even though I sleep less than six, seven hours at that point. But I feel great and I actually get a lot of things done. I usually feel great. And the second option is what I did today, unfortunately. I wake up at 11 a.m., but I'm fully rested. And to be honest, yes, I am in fact fully rested. I can use my cognitive abilities to their maximum potential, but I wasted my morning. I'm gonna be honest, I changed my opinions on the whole waking up early thing. Usually, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> in most cases, if you're a teenager, you think that waking up early is bull why would anyone do that but the older i actually get the more i realize that there is really an art to waking up early i don't wake up at 5 a.m i'm not one of those guys but waking up at 7 8 a.m you just feel more productive you feel like you're ready to conquer the day and you do actually conquer the day because what the f are you gonna do at 8 a.m you're gonna go to the gym that early 
I mean, some people can do that. I personally can. I usually wait to go to the gym until 12 p.m., 1 p.m., around that time. And so, I forgot what I was gonna say here. You feel like a king when you actually wake up early and you get things done. Maybe in that early time period, you could just focus on self-improvement. 8 a.m., wake up. 8.30, meditate. 9 a.m., journal. 10 a.m., read. 11 a.m., go to the gym. And you get to this point, right, where it's 2 or 3 p.m., and you're basically finished for the day when it comes to self-improvement. You may have actual work that you have to do, or you have to play piano. I'm sorry, you get to play piano, and you get to learn a language. All of this, in my opinion, that's pretty important as well. But it's nice when you do things early in the morning. That's what I'm trying to say here. But also, getting quality sleep is important. Now, the question is, which one is more important? Would you be sleep deprived? Not exactly sleep deprived, but not have optimal, ideal sleep and do amazing work or wake up later in the day and you have to rush everything. I personally hate waking up at 11 a.m. and I'm one of those guys that just needs those 10 hours of sleep. I forgot who it was, the guy that said, oh, you only need three hours of sleep. I work 21 hours a day. That's also the extreme end of it. So sleep. It's helpful. If you can sleep 9 to 10 hours a day every single day, go ahead. I'm not saying anything against that. But if you're young and you want to start your own business, you want to work out, you want to learn a language, you want to read books, you want to do 15 things every single day, you gotta sacrifice something. I'm not saying be an idiot and sleep 4 hours a night, but try to get 6 hours. That's my only requirement, I guess. Next up is a healthy diet. Now, when I started self-improvement, I did it all at once. I did meditation, journaling, gratitude, reading, everything, basically. And so, I cannot exactly tell you if healthy... Can I tell you? I mean, of course, there's a benefit when you're eating a high-protein, low-sugar, moderate-fat diet, or even high-fat, to be honest, rather than eating a diet that's only based on sugar. And so, what I can tell you is, I can speak about fitness here. You will, in fact, build muscle if you eat sh food. You will do it. And, of course, you're training, right? All of that. But you won't feel right. And you will also gain more fat. I don't know about you, bro, but I don't need more body fat percentage than I have right now. I'm somewhere in between the 14 and 16% range, and I don't plan to go anywhere beyond that. What I'm saying here is, it's not worth it to eat unhealthy, genuinely. Once you get into the rhythm of healthy eating every single day, you won't need the junk food. And you want to know how I started eating healthy? I put my favorite snack in front of me. So on the table, I put Jaffa cakes. And this was my favorite high sugary unhealthy snack. And I just stared at it. And of course, I failed plenty of times. But I got to this point where I don't want it. You know how I did that? I installed my fitness pal and got obsessed with the macros. Discomforting feeling when you have your macro goal. So 80 grams of sugar maximum today. And you ate 160 grams due to that Jaffa cake packet. Bad snack, bro. I genuinely hate it. When I see it, I'm like, I have trauma, bro, because you would put it on the table and you would say to yourself, I cannot eat this, bro. This has too much sugar and too many calories. I mean, calories wasn't really a problem for me, but it has too much sugar. I want to eat healthy. And you just stare at it for five seconds watching something on YouTube, right? And just naturally grab it unconsciously almost. And <sighs> Did that happen? I won't say it didn't happen, but something along those lines. Maybe I overdramatized it a little bit. But healthy eating, it is in fact extremely helpful. For some people that only eat junk food, it will be life changing. But if you're a guy that eats kind of healthy, as I've said, once you get to this point where you only eat healthy foods in your diet, you won't see the purpose of eating unhealthy because. 
In fact, it will only ruin your gym progress. That's the same mindset I have for alcohol. Not alcohol, I, I have a different mindset. I might talk about that. My mindset for junk food is, yeah, I might feel like eating KFC today. I would actually eat KFC. But if I eat it, I'm gonna probably feel like sh and I won't be able to record a video for the next few hours. And also I'll add some fat on my frame and I won't be as strong as I possibly could be. So why would I do it? And my mindset for alcohol is you can actually clip this part and send it to your friends. It might be actually useful for you to hear this. If I'm gonna get drunk, if I'm gonna drink alcohol, I may as well get f because I'm not a guy that does things in moderation. I'm a very extreme person, as you can probably see. If I'm gonna drink alcohol, I'm gonna get fucked up. But I don't want other people to be endangered because of me. I don't really want to get in a position where I'm blackout drunk. I, I've actually... <laughs> I did actually do that once, and it wasn't a nice experience. I puked 11 or 12 times. But what I'm trying to say is, if I'm gonna get drunk... I may as well do it all the way, but that's unhealthy, so I won't drink at all. When I actually drink alcohol nowadays, it's just one or two glasses of wine, and that's basically it. I haven't drank in a while, by the way. Back into the video, 28 minutes in, and I've only ranked like three things. Woo! When I think about this, the thing that instantly pops into my mind is that study that they did, and they tested random people at the end of their lives, what do you value the most? What is it that you regret or something like that? I need to actually check the study. I may do it after this video. So I'll put a correction somewhere. I probably won't. I'm not gonna lie to myself. Do you know what people value at the end of their lives? Social connection. Yeah, you may have a few billion dollars, sure. But if you don't have anyone to share it with, if you don't have any experiences with your friends, it doesn't really matter. Here's the thing. If you're lonely, it is life-changing. If you have bad friends, if you have friends who are really not into self-improvement, it is extremely helpful. If I could put it in between life-changing and extremely helpful. I'm saying this because there will be periods where you're gonna have to be alone. You're gonna have to do work on your own if you plan to start a business. There will, in fact, be a time where you're gonna be so focused on your work, you really won't have time to go out with friends, to go and have a coffee. I'm not saying that these things are bad. You can go out and uh, have coffee with your friends. What I am saying is, you will, in fact, have to enter monk mode at some point if you want to reach massive levels of success. So, it goes into the extremely helpful category. Ooh, okay, I know what it is, motherfucker. This is a timetable. I've spoken about timetables and just generally having a routine in a lot of my videos. I think I'm actually getting quite repetitive with the whole timetable thing. You have to create a timetable because you're gonna be more concentrated. You're, you'll you get to do work that you want whenever you want. Why do you think schools have timetables? All of this stuff that I usually say. And now I'm in this weird position where I don't have a timetable from hour to hour. As you know, men are supposed to live outside their comfort zone. And I got to this point where my timetable was actually my comfort zone. So I'm gonna be a bit more liberating when it comes to my time. And sometimes because it's summer, things do in fact f up. Every single day I do wake up, I will in fact try to wake up at the same time as I've previously mentioned. And the first thing I do is learn Italian, then read, then journal, then meditate. Every single day, I do things in relatively the same order, but not at the exact same time. So, I am, in fact, more libertarian. Is it libertarian or, like, liberal? <laughs> not liberal, definitely not that. So, timetable. When you're first starting self-improvement, it is extremely helpful. But for me right now, it is helpful or maybe even nah i'm not gonna put it into mac category it doesn't deserve that it was a thing that really helped me in the beginning but for right now for this present moment it's really not that special fitness has come out has come out this deserves its own row i don't care whatever you say to me should we change the color fitness 
it deserves its own category. I'm actually getting emotional right here talking about fitness because I'm in this position now where I'm getting into the intermediate stage of fitness and I love it, bro. And I've never felt such brotherhood, the brotherhood effect, whatever you want to call it. I've never felt that before fitness because <laughs> as you can probably imagine, I do get memes about fitness on Instagram. I usually don't watch them. I feel like we're all part of something here. I think the community aspect is important and it's not talked about enough. We all have had the same beginning. We all either got bullied in school or felt inferior. We all got rejected by a girl we liked. And so we're in this together. Even though we're all competing against each other, we're still a part of something bigger here. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, I can talk about how it literally changes your own self-perception of yourself. You get more respect. Women like you more. You feel like the boss when you've actually built a good physique. And it makes your overall day better. And also, you get discipline from it. But if you have a random guy, he gets rejected 50 times in one hour. That same guy, if he goes to the gym an hour later, he's going to feel much better about himself because he did something productive. And I have this mindset when it comes to fitness, and that is, okay, if I can't do anything today, if I don't have the time to record a video, if I don't have the time to play piano, I may as well go to the gym because I am working on myself and so it will make me one step closer to my goal of achieving the ideal physique. And so fitness, it deserves its own f***ing category. It's the drug that started all of self-improvement for me and maybe even for you as well. And by the way, this doesn't just have to be fitness. It can also be exercise in general. I don't have anything against cardio, but it's about doing the right cardio. I, I like boxing, for example. I mean, I liked boxing until this happened, but... That's besides the point. I, I'll explain that in another video. <laughs> okay, okay, I know what this next one is. I mean, it's alright. Overrated as f in my opinion. <laughs> if you can improve it, sure, go ahead. Sleep in a dark environment that's silent, that has a comfortable bed. You can also sleep on the floor if you want, but... I wouldn't actually recommend that. It won't be a comfortable experience. That's what I'm trying to say. But uh, discomfort is the builder of masculinity. Sure, if you want to sleep on the floor. I'll sleep not on a bed, but on a couch that's extended. I'll also notice that I have to change things up when it comes to sleeping. So I cannot sleep in one room for a longer period of time. I'm just not used to it. Another thing that you ought to look out for, how hot the room is. The ideal room temperature while sleeping is 17 to 19 degrees. Visualizations. But listen up, for visualizations, there is in fact an argument that yeah, it sure is helpful, but you're most likely just gonna waste your time. You may waste your time if you're doing it incorrectly. For example, when I do visualizations, I usually put on music and I imagine my future lifestyle hitting 100,000 subscribers, even hitting a million subscribers, driving a good car whilst also listening to the same music I'm listening to right now. And I can remember this basketball study when it comes to visualizations. And so they do actually work. Listen up. One group of people had to practice basketball for, I believe, 15 minutes every single day. The other group of people, they just visualized them practicing and hitting the shots. And in the end, both groups had the same percentage of shots in the net. That tells us that even if we visualize ourselves doing something, it's nearly like doing it. I don't believe it's actually the same as doing it. Does it hurt to do visualizations? Most likely it doesn't. And that's why it's going in the helpful tier. Maybe visualizations are becoming a thing of, oh, astrology girl does visualizations, but I don't believe it's like that. I think it does help me to imagine Myself being in a position where I plan to be in a year or two years from now, it doesn't hurt to do it. That's what I'm trying to say here. But the actual argument here is which of these things help you the most? And visualizations are in fact helpful, but 
fitness, for example, is much more important. I don't believe that visualizations are a must-to-do thing for success, but they are useful. I'll give you a real example, okay? Here's something that you can use pretty much every single day. You're doing a heavy set of squats and you're really not sure how you're gonna be able to do it. Do you know what a successful person would do in this scenario? They wouldn't be worried about it. They would visualize themselves finishing the set, completing six or seven reps and being like all out, yeah, I did it, I did it. This is what successful people do. I do this, for example, when I'm hearing PRs, I don't do it every set like some other people. But still, as I've said, it's gonna be useful to you. And also, approaching girls. This is what guys do. This is actually a thing. For a lot of cases, it actually works. So I have a meme with my friends where I'll say the power of belief and do something. And in that scenario, it usually doesn't work because it's something ridiculous like opening a lock or something like that. But it does in fact work. You should try it for yourself. And I actually have to look this one up as well. It's social media. It's actually the leading social media, as you can see. Before this, I actually thought it was social media, like social media is garbage author's personal note or something like that. I've had a different stance to the majority of self-improvement YouTubers nowadays. I don't know if that's the actual majority, I'm just pulling that statistic out of my ass. But I do believe that a lot of guys in this self-improvement space... Okay, I've hit my mic. It seems to me that a lot of guys nowadays are preaching this message of uninstall social media, it's gonna make you unhappy, don't uh, ever install Instagram, all this stuff. And my argument is you're going to be the only guy who does that, right? And it is kind of awkward to tell all your friends, uninstall Instagram, you shouldn't do that. It's making us unhappy every single day. Most likely they're going to ignore you. We can say that. And so how do you actually use social media effectively? You use it actively. So liking photos, writing comments, messaging your friends. But if you're the mother dude who uses Instagram or TikTok, uh, by the way, I uninstalled TikTok, I'm not gonna even talk about that in this video, but if you're a guy who uses YouTube for YouTube shorts, just like <laughs> dopamine, <laughs> right? If you're using social media passively, that's not good. It's making you unhappier every single day and you should quit doing that right now. Even if you're doing that during this video, maybe on the other tab or something like that, please stop doing that. Deleting social media, I actually did an experiment where I deleted social media for a brief period. It was two or three months and I was in fact happier, but that's because I wasn't using social media the way it's supposed to be used to be social, not to see other people's lives and to see their perfection. By the way, their life isn't actually perfect. They're just putting that on social media, but you most likely knew that already. Cold showers, overrated as f in my opinion. I don't see the point of it. If you want to do cold showers for testosterone, go ahead. Me as a guy who lives a pretty hectic life, I don't see it as a necessary thing. But if you want to do it, you can go ahead. Maybe if you have a no fat purge or something like that, cold showers are an amazing thing. I don't see it as a necessary thing. Is it an L category though? Improving your fashion. I'm not gonna lie here. Most guys dress like shit because they don't dress according to themselves. If you authentically ask yourself, what do I want to wear? What seems cool to me? What fits my personality? If you ask yourself that one question, you're gonna be ahead of the majority of guys because nobody asks themselves nowadays. They just pick a random shirt, they pick random jeans, whatever, it doesn't really matter to me. Pick something that you actually like. You may not fit into the professional world where it comes to dressing well. Of course, you do need a suit, but if you want to wear Hawaiian shirts, just go ahead. I like dressing professionally. I think it very much suits me that James Bond slash assassin look. You probably know what I'm talking about. Peaky blinders and such. And so dressing, well, it's extremely helpful. I believe it's extremely helpful because it looks good, sure. But it also gives you a lot of confidence, which is great. Last up, and I need to wrap this up quickly because I've been recording for an hour. This includes deep journaling and gratitude journaling. Gratitude journaling, as you know, 
you write the things you're grateful for and deep journaling you go deep into maybe some trauma that you have or a problem of yours whatever it's important to do especially in the early stages of self-improvement but after a while most of your psychological problems get fixed i don't do deep journaling that much i try to gratitude journal every single day that's one thing i still do nearly every single day it's it's fitness category no i'm just kidding when you're starting self-improvement it's extremely helpful but for me right now it's helpful let's fix some things and add maybe another category because it looks weird This is how the tier list looks like. If you've skipped until the end of this video, you are a Watch every single bit of it and I don't want you to skip ahead because you've missed some pretty important side tangents here. Maybe I will do this again in the future with somebody else potentially because this was in fact very fun for me to do and I guarantee it will be more fun to do it with someone. Maybe Hamza. <laughs> Hamza, if you're watching this video, bro, I'm inviting you to do a self-improvement habits tier list. You have my permission to spam his Instagram to do a collab with me. But that's it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've learned something and if you've enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like or maybe even a subscribe and of course i'll see you at the top